come and give him praise. Amen. 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 I'm so excited to be here today. I'm excited to see you guys. We apologize for not having a microphone. Uh, that will be rectified on next week. Uh, but we're excited to have you here on the grounds this morning. Amen. Amen. I know y'all saw it in the hot sun. It is in the old school festival, so I ain't going to bother you very long. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But listen, uh, we just want to kind of address some of the things that we've been experiencing uh, in our world, in our nation, in our community. Uh, kind of give some light to it from, God, uh, from a godly perspective. Uh, the stand that the body of Christ, that the church should take. Uh, but I want to leave a word of encouragement with you this morning. That God ain't done with us yet. Amen. God is not finished. God ain't through. God has work for us to do. God has an assignment for each and every last one of you. Amen. 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 And I know and I believe, like the Bible said, that God's best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. Through this pandemic, amen, through the civil unrest that we're experiencing, I believe God is working in and amongst and through every single situation that we see. Amen. And I'm praying for every believer, everybody who names the name of Jesus Christ to have a special commitment to seek God's face, to have God to download to us intellectually, have God download to us even in this era of social distancing, for God to download to us a spiritual non-distancing. Amen? Amen. So just because we're having to change our paradigm don't mean we have to change our praise. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, if you have your Bible this morning, I want you to turn to the book of Acts. Turn to the book of Acts, chapter number 28, beginning at verse number 32. Amen? And Facebook Live friends, listen, uh, let me know how the volume is. I'm going to have to be a, 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 little, a little loud just so that the others can hear. Uh, so let me know if our volume is okay uh, in there. Amen, amen, amen. Acts chapter 28, and we're going to begin reading at verse 23. Amen? If you have it, say amen. If not, say hold on one second. Amen. amen. We holding up, then. We holding up on I know sometimes the light may be a little difficult to see your electronic devices, so try to manipulate it and get you some shade. Amen. They, get, they sell little covers uh, for your phones and tablets nowadays that you can put on there uh, that will help shield it. Amen? Amen. But we thank God that God is keeping you in good health. Uh, we pray for everyone who has been affected uh, with this coronavirus. We pray for those uh, who are not practicing uh, good habits or hygiene or social distancing. We pray for those because one thing they don't realize is that they, they not only affect themselves, but they affect others as well. Amen. Uh, so we got to be good stewards. We got to be good citizens in this hour and this day and this time. And uh, we just want to share uh, what we believe what thus says the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Acts chapter 28, verse 23, it says, So when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets, from morning until evening. And some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. Amen, somebody. How many know that even uh, when people hear the word of God, some disbelieve? Amen. How many know that? Everybody don't believe just because they hear. Belief is a connection with your mind and your heart and a conviction that you govern yourselves according to what you hear. Amen. What's the old statement in the Baptist church? Govern yourselves. I knew I had some Baptist folk in here. Amen. The scripture goes on to say in verse 25, it says, So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul and said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah, the prophet to our fathers, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive, for the hearts of this people have grown dull, for their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes, and ear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts, and turn, so that I should heal them. Verse 28 says, 
Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. Amen? I want to talk to you uh, from the subject this morning concerning don't let somebody else's blessing become someone else's promise. Amen? Let me say it like this. Don't let the blessing that was designed for you become somebody else's promise. Amen, somebody. But also I want to say it like this as well. Somebody else's blessing has become your promise. Amen? Amen. Uh, listen, let's pray very quickly. Father God, we just come before you today. We just thank God for you, Lord. We, we lift you up right now. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for the, every believer, every, every heart that's here today. We pray, Father God, protection and covering upon them. God, we pray, Lord, that you continue to lead us and guide us as only your hand of grace and mercy can do. God, even in this hour, give us wisdom, give us understanding as to what we should know and what we ought to be doing in this time and in this hour. Lord, we bless you. We honor you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. If you agree, somebody say amen. 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 There's a phrase that I absolutely don't like, and we use it far too often. That phrase is, let's agree to disagree. The reason why I don't like that phrase, and I believe God doesn't like it as well, is because there has been no resolution to whatever problem that has been presented. The only thing that we have accomplished is that we're looking at it from two different perspectives and we're looking at it from two different sides of the coin. And a lot of times, the side that we choose to see is the side that benefits us or benefits me. Amen, somebody. The side we need to be looking at it on is what is God's appointed side and what does God's will demand or state. Amen? When we look at our society, the things that are going on, we've come out of all types of calamity with death and loss of family members of, of uh, celebrities who we know, all the way into this coronavirus pandemic, uh, which none of us the like has ever seen in our lifetime, and I pray none of us ever see again. Even through this coronavirus pandemic, we've lost loved ones, we've lost family members, we've, wa we've watched uh, a lot of calamity, a lot of catastrophe to manifest and to take place. Also, as we come out of this thing, then we have the murder of another man by the hands of a police officer in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which has led to the civil unrest in this time and in this hour. It seems like everything that could go wrong is going wrong in America. Am I right about it? And not only is it impacting America, it's now impacting on a global scale. We have leadership making decisions that's not a popular decision to make, but also is decisions that are not going to benefit the whole. We have our leadership driving us down a hole that it seems like if we don't get a U-turn very quickly, it's going to end in death and destruction. The Bible says that the plans of a man's heart, they may be good, but they lead to death and destruction. What we need is we need to be led by God. We need a word from God. I hear people echoing, what is the church doing? What is the church saying? Why is the church not standing up? I believe part of that formality is that a lot of people don't even understand who or what the church is. The church is not just this building. The church is not just this organization. The church is not denominationalism. But the church is at the heart of every believer in you and I. In Matthew 16, when Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? They gave a myriad of answers. But at the end, the, uh, uh, Peter jumped up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when Peter made that declaration, Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who's in heaven has made this known to you. Saints, the church are the ones that are able to hear from heaven. The church are the ones that are able to hear the unction of God. The church is the ones that are able to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Just because we come together don't mean that we're the church. we got to be led by God. We move into a season that if God don't lead us, there's no telling where we'll end up. Uh, am I right about it? In our text, in our text, the Apostle Paul 
is surmising this great ministry and work that God has set him out on. He has done uh, extensive work in missionary work and laying the foundation, laying the groundwork, getting the word out, and preaching the kingdom of God. Amen? Paul was stoned. Paul was left for dead. Paul was dragged out from city to city. Paul was talked about. Paul was scorned. Anything that could have happened to Paul, it happened to Paul while he was trying to work for the Lord. And it seems that if there's going to be any safe place, the safe place ought to be in working for the Lord. Amen? But now we see Paul surmising all that he had gone through. The, uh, a couple of chapters before this, Paul made a statement uh, when he came back uh, to his home base. He said, listen, it's a must that we go through great tribulation in order to enter the kingdom of God. How many know that the kingdom of God is not something uh, haphazard or, or something that uh, you just get a right to? But the kingdom is something you got to work to get into. Because the kingdom of God is operating in this world which is full of darkness. Amen? The kingdom of God stands in direct opposition to a lot of things that are happening in the world. And as a church, we have to echo what does the Lord say? What does God say about this? What does God say about that? We can't rest on our intellect, but we've got to be driven by our spirit, man. Paul says here in verse 23 that he set up camp, and a lot of people were, begun, were, were coming to hear what thus said the Lord, and they wanted to hear about the kingdom, hear about Jesus. Well, in this, in this dialogue, it says that Paul, once he got done preaching, it says that some believed, but some did not. Some were persuaded, and some were not. Some were convinced, but some were not. I want to submit to you today, saints, don't be one of those that's not persuaded by the Word of God. Let the Word of God persuade you and convince you to follow hard after God. Amen? Following hard after God will uh, cause you to go after your promise. Because you understand and you know that God has given us promises. And if we also know through the Word of God that if God gives us something, if God says something, it is so. It says that God is not like man that he should lie. God is not like man that he's going to deceive us. But God, if he says it, it shall come to pass. Do I have a witness in here? When God says something, when God speaks something, when God reveals something, it's not a question of if. It's a question of when. So after Paul preached from morning unto evening, and some were persuaded and some didn't believe, verse 25 says, So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said this one word. The Holy Spirit has revealed through the prophet Isaiah a profound understanding. And I believe that that's where we are right now in our society and in our culture. We talk about America being a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We see that justice delayed is justice denied. We see that everyone's liberties are not enjoyed or encouraged or protected like everyone else. That means that the church has a role in standing up and to make sure that America is held true to its promise that is made because it's named the name of God. Interesting to note, it says they did not agree among each other. In the book of Amos 3 and 3 it says, how can two walk together except they agree on the direction. Saints of God, we've got to come to a place and a time that we come to an agreement. The truth of the matter is, it's not about who's right, it's about what's right. It's not about your will being done, but it's about God's will being done. It's not about your dream coming to pass, it's about God's dream coming to pass. Do I have a witness? You want to pray effective prayers? Learn what God is saying. Learn what God desires. But the, but the greatest thing about that is, is that God does not leave us out. God has promised 
to take care of us. God has promised to provide for us that if we go and name his name, he said he will uphold you. Verse 26 says, and this is from Isaiah the prophet. It says, go to this people and give them this revelation. He says, hearing, you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing, you will see and not perceive. It's amazing to me how so many people can watch the video of George being murdered, of George being killed, and they come up with different perceptions like, well, he was trying to resist, or he was fighting against, or the cop didn't do anything wrong. It's amazing to me that it's so hard for them to see and not understand. But God has told us that day and that time is coming. We're in that age. We're in that moment that we're going to face some opposition and a spiritual opposition that they're going to see and not understand, that they're going to perceive and not to be able to tell heads or tails. He says in verse 27, For the hearts of the people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. If we look around, we see that happening right now in our midst. Do we not? That no matter how often we scream, no justice, no peace, it seems that they don't understand until we see justice, there will be no peace. As many times as we begin to yell out for the lives of our black brothers and sisters and, and for, uh, for all those, matter of fact, who name the name of Christ, they don't understand that the, the level of injustice is just un, uncompromising. The level of injustice is really is undigestible. That we've arrived at a place that you see people rioting. You see people marching. You see people looting because they can't stand for any more. Am I right about it? The prophet Isaiah said, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, watch this, so that I should heal them. God's whole main purpose is to let us know that healing comes from God. God is the only one who can change a man's heart. I remember Matthew McConaughey made a statement in a movie in which he was playing a lawyer defending a black man against murdering or shooting two guys who had raped his daughter. He came to the understanding and said, no matter how many laws are passed, you cannot legislate the thoughts of a man's heart. Only God can do that. It's time enough for us to begin to cry out to God and begin to understand that it's God who's going to have to intervene and sway the hearts of these men. God is going to have to come in and remove the hatred out of the hearts of those who don't like you because of the pigment of your skin color. It's God is going to have to come in to remove the oppression, the angst that black men and women feel and brown women, uh, women and men feel because of the oppression that they have experienced. It's God is going to have to do that. And God said, the only thing that's holding you up, the only thing that's holding us up is being able to hear and understand. Right here in verse 28, he says something very profound. God comes to the conclusion with Paul and says, Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and that they will hear it. I want to I challenge you today, saints of God. Don't forfeit the promises that God has given you because you're stubborn or hard-headed. Don't forfeit what God has put in your hands because you allow emotion to pull you from where God wants you to be. The reason why the enemy likes to stir up commotion, the reason why the enemy likes to rattle you up is because when you get rattled up and you get emotional, you will do things that's outside of your normal character. Don't let nobody pull you out of your character. Right now is the time that you got to maintain your character. You got to stand tall. We've got to stand shoulder to shoulder. We've got to face opposition. We've got to face it and stare down fear right in the midst of his eyes and not blink one second. That's where we are. That's where we are. 
For God said to Paul that the Gentiles will hear it. Don't let the promises that God has made to you, don't let them go without a fight. Don't let them go without you going after God with all of your heart. Don't let them go without you selling out totally to God. And I know what you're thinking, that sometimes there's certain situations that will cause you to stumble. Certain situations will cause you to backpedal. But don't give up on God. You stand your, you stand your ground and you stand on what's right. And sooner or later, justice will eradicate injustice. Sooner or later, truth will overcome the lie. Sooner or later, the light will shine through the darkness. The Bible says that God has given us or delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of light. Don't let your promises go without a fight. As a matter of fact, there's some promises that you have that others neglected along the way. Amen, somebody. Whatever God has said about you, whatever God has given to you, whatever God has built you for, go after it with all your might. Whatever God has put in you, you dig deep and you chase after your passion. Whatever God has graced you with, whatever God has blessed you with, whatever God has anointed you with, go after it. Go after it, whole heart and soul. Martin Luther King Jr. said, a man is not yet fit to live unless he has found some cause to die. In other words, we got to stay committed even to the point of death. In the book of Philippians, it says that Jesus was committed to God all the way to the point of death and even the cross. And we see an instance where Jesus was standing in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus posed a question to God. He said, God, if it be your will, let this bitter cup pass. But then he also reconciled that thought by saying, but nevertheless, God, let your will be done. We may have some hard days. And we may have some hard trials in front of us. But nevertheless, let the will of God be done in your life. Is there anybody here today who knows that God's will shall be done? Who knows that God's will will come to pass? Who knows that the blessings and promises that God has for you are on their way? Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Don't let somebody else enjoy your promises. But you walk in your good thing. Amen? Amen. It was also once said that one man's trash is another man's treasure. I'm here to tell you today that whether God has given you a gold brick or a bag of coals, I'm here to tell you through the process there's a, pre- there's a priceless jewel in the mix. You may have a bag of coal, but God has a way of putting pressure on that coal so long that you'll find out that there's a diamond. So everything that you went through in life was worth it because that diamond was worth more than anything that you could ever have in your life. So don't look back over your life and ask God, why me? Oh, God, ask God, why not me? Don't look back over your life and say, God, I didn't have. Look back over your life and say, God, you prepared me for this. Don't look back over your life and say, God, you wasn't there and realize those were the times that God carried you through. Amen, somebody. Come on, everybody stand to their feet very quickly. Come on, stand to your feet very quickly. Come on, just lift your hands right now before the Lord. And just just begin to give God some thanks. Begin to give God some praise for all that he's done, all that he's doing. When we weren't worthy, God counted us worthy. When we didn't deserve it, God still gave it to us. Come on, somebody out here ought to be able to thank God right now. We're living well. We're eating good. We're dressed fine. God brought us through the storm. He brought us through the rain. God protected us. He covered us. Even those that may have gone through, the whole point of the matter is you made it to the other side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we name your name in this place. We give you praise and honor and thanks as do your heavenly name. Facebook Live fans, we just say, come on, wait where you are. Just lift up your hands and begin to praise them and begin to thank them. 
for all that he's done and all that he's doing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. We love you guys.